Okay, hello and welcome to um, the first, but hopefully not the last, sort of development log on Pantomime here, which uh, is a web browser, you know, kind of. Um, I can I can demonstrate that a little bit. Um, no no renderer. Very very early stages. So the main objective here is not to build a, a complex web browser. So nothing like like Firefox or, or Chrome or I guess I guess Ladybird would be the best thing to point to. Uh, and the reason for that is I specifically want to target um, embedded systems with networking support. Uh, the primary example being the, the PlayStation 2 console, just as a challenge for myself and out of curiosity for, for how these things work. Um, you can see, as of now, we have a basic parser going. I can go in the make file, very, very simple. Um, no libraries are linked. Right now it uses, you know, standard GNU C, libc. Um, and, and that's it for now. That will change. I, I want this to be abstract in a way to where um, you could easily provide your own renderer. Uh, I want to I wanna do away with, with this concept of advanced painting. I hope to do away with that concept. And as an example, um, say, you're, say you're familiar with the SDL library. You can link SDL and you can throw together a renderer. Um, and then the way we, we set up our layout is in such a way to where you really have no issues. Um, you wrap some functions for, for rendering text in a basic manner or, um, or images or, or things like that. Uh, you know, I'll mention Ladybird here as being the primary inspiration for this, um, or, or Andreas and the Serenity project as a whole. Uh, you know, really, really interesting. Uh, watching his videos in a similar fashion, or just the project itself kind of grow. And uh, I wanted to experience that for myself somewhat. So um, I'm not here um, conducting myself in a lot less great of a manner, but figured it'd be good to share. So my objective today is I've asked around and I've got some website samples here because I've never tested our parser and anything other than this test document that we have. Which is, you know, messy on purpose. It doesn't make too much sense on purpose um, to to strain uh, stuff we have here. You'll notice things like uh, like two Boolean values in one element, um, two different Booleans. Because this this was broken for until yesterday when I spent some time um, fixing the way we we parse attributes in a document. So we're going to take a look at some actual websites here. Today I'm using uh, Chromium. I usually use Firefox, but um, I decided to use Chromium because I felt like it. So we have some documents here. We have the, the 1998 Nintendo site, which is just an image, really. Um, well, there's there's some substance here. I haven't taken a, a good look at these, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. There's also... The 2010 Nintendo site, which is one of the heavier ones. Um, I'm hoping there's some stuff that I can work on in here. I don't expect anything from this. Um, actually, that's a lie. I took a look at this beforehand, and there was one thing I knew. I actually didn't have it. There's uh, the old net developer riches uh, forward site. Very, very simple document here. There's the Castlevania Dungeon site, which... Uh, talks a little bit about the Castlevania games and it's sort of a a wiki before wikis took off. Uh, you see 2010, I'm sure it went beyond that. Um, a kernel, kernel a word website. I don't exactly uh, this kind of goes over my head a little bit. Um, I'm not too sure what this is. But it was suggested and it's simple and it deals with tables so but that was neat and then we have the wololo site 
um, it's taking a long time to load here. Oh, because it's being Google. That's awesome. Um, this one, I'm sure there'll be a lot to break here. I'm hoping not to have to um, majorly rework anything to get a get a sense of um, what I have to do here. That would be that would be great. That would be fantastic. Um, but who knows? I'd, I'd like for this to just be a pretty simple video. Just me going over it. Let's see how that goes. So let's start. Let's plug in the uh, something that looks like here. And the one thing I did notice is um, some light things. Uh, there's actually some elements here that we don't support. Um, some attributes. And then length. So uh, prepare your eyes for this. This is rather ugly. This is uh, our attribute presser. It's all plain C. And it deals with a lot of, a lot of string comparisons. Um, I know Ladybird has this large JSON file that I think deals with most of the stuff we have here where it just kind of redirects things but you know we have plain C and um, certainly this has to be faster which is, is the primary goal um, you know I don't want building the document to take too much time I want most of the time to be spent um, you know retrieving the, the data from the web page um, via via curl and um, actually rendering I'm fine with some slow render times it's it's expected but storing everything in the structures uh, building the tree building the layout I want to be fast so this is what we have this is the consequence of that uh, so go to parts line should be so the way this works, the way length works, is I have a I have a comment somewhere here. Is there's there's a bunch of relative measurements that I don't even want to begin to think about right now. And then we have these absolute measurements, and absolute measurements have um, different suffixes here, different measurement factors that we all convert to pixels, uh, just for ease of use. But if we take a look at the document. It has some length elements um, with 560. There is no prefix here, so we have to account for this. So um, let's do. Oh, I forgot I'm using Google Chromium. So <clears throat> let's let's see if we can find something that talks about. The default, okay, with the pixels. This works for me. So, and then measurement length. Um, so I guess the way we want this to work. If the last character in the string is, what's the C index for, for numbers? I guess a greater than or equal to zero. Last bar is less than or equal to uh, not. That way we know it's or, or hope it's a number. Um, does that make sense? It's greater than zero. Less than. Yeah, this makes sense. Okay. Then so it's length dot. Or I guess we don't have to do anything. Do we already sift through this? We might. I think we do that at the beginning. Yeah, okay. So we don't really have to do anything here, but, um... And then, um, I'll just throw a print in here. Just to, just to make sure that's running as we expect. And then we throw this guy in here. Um, because then we don't know what to do. So I'll go ahead and rebuild it. Okay, and that didn't quite work. That's interesting. So what is... What is the value here? I think I just call it value. Right? Yeah, it's just a value. This is a kind of a long function. Yeah. 
So, um, this is interesting. So what I'm wondering is what Chrome does. <laughs> See if I can make this easier on myself. So, um, inspect. I haven't really used their dev tools too much. It looks like it four sets of pixels. Yeah. So I wonder what happens. Um, sorry, is it always pixels? Oh, well, it'd help if I'm looking at the right place. Top margin. Are these just aliases for each other? I think they're just aliases, which is um, interesting. So I guess I can't edit the document like that, which kind of just displays my ignorance. So I'll open up in Kate real fast. So. So, where's the top margin? Why I give this a suffix? That makes no sense. Does it still be fault the pixels? Oh no, where was that? Nope. No, it, it breaks it completely. Okay, that's fine. It's better than equal to zero. Less than equal to zero. Oh, well, that's the problem, right? Greater than or equal to zero. And if it's uh, less than or equal to nine, that was, that was a mistake on both. And that works fine. A <laughs> um, little bit of anxiety about recording. Which is fine. So, let me get rid of these prints now. in a little bit. Um, rebuild. Awesome. So and then we have these attributes and the t-bot. So back to uh, goggle t-body. Through body. The body element is in conjunction with the t -body, but are these these are just aliases, surely. Because it isn't foot in HTML or not. Foot owner. Do we have support for foot owner? No, we have T foot and T head. We really don't have T body. That's um that's interesting. So let me add Work for that. Where is it? Where is it? T foot. Okay. Fine. Small element. T body. Nine. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. You know, I'm doing this to learn. Um, so, I'm allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> okay, so there's that, and now we need to check for T body. String case comparison. The tag name is T body zero. So, real quick, T body versus body. Very different. HTML.com. This uh, doesn't seem to answer my question. Oh, this is the do with tables. Why is this? Why are there tables here? Why is there an image in a table? I probably should have should have noticed that. Uh, my my mistake. Well, um, T body. Okay. 
Okay. So what do we make clean? Okay. So attribute type. Um, so the thing about the type attribute, if I recall correctly, I probably made a note of it. Somewhere, where would I where would I put it? Attribute type parser, attribute type data type. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So types are weird. Um, HTML 4.01. So go to the attributes. Do search for type. Or, or not. So there's a lot of different types, and usually this was fine. But they all have different um, structs, types. I don't want to say types because of the attribute name, but they're types. Uh, you know, once some are content types, which is C data, and there's input type, which is, um, and in our case, would be an enum. And there's li, ol, and ui, which is um, another C data, another C data, and then a completely different email. So this this is a challenge I've, I've yet to look at. Because if you take a look at attribute types, a lot of things that the spec asks to be C data or just strings um, are put in the enums, put in the structs, just for the sake of compact data storage. So I'm, I've yet to ask myself if, if there's a way I want to work this problem or if I just want to get over it and make type uh, a, a, a char star, a string, whatever. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to opt to ignore this for now. Top margin and left margin. Those were those. That's right. Um, let me fix. So these go in the body. So if I set this to ninety, it's margin top between ninety. Yeah, it does. So I think these are these are aliases for each other. That's what I'm going to choose to believe. <laughs> so um, if I got a the margin top. Do I not have margin top? Really? I also have margin height without uh, the hyphen. What's the, what's the spec set? It's a mistake on my part? No. Someone asked it. Okay, so there's the issue before it assumes pixels. Hopefully, this, this goes for every length. So I would have to have um, created a bug. Not have been nice. So, top margin versus margin top. No, I did not mean did not mean that. Okay, I'm going to say this is not HTML. <laughs> I was fooled. Let me specify. Interesting.
No, that's it. Oh, I think I understand. So margin top is the CSS name. Um, okay. So, how do I, I guess I will add support for top margin and left margin. It's fine. So, here, so length T, top margin. And then does this apply to everything? I guess it would help if I didn't keep. The margin, left margin, or bottom margin. I will just add them. Yeah, okay. I will just add them up. Let's see now. In front of the T, bottom margin. Sorry, it's one here. And then left margin. Left margin. And then in the right margin. Well, I, I basically need to do the same thing here. Start with bottom margin. And this, uh, this large mess here. So that would help if I spelled. In margin. Attributes. Margin. No parse point attribute. Right, am I is margin always pixels? Always pixels. There's no way that's true. I don't think I like that. I don't. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick the link. And then it'll catch it and it'll be fine. Uh, you know, the idea here is not to be exactly 100% spec friendly. So I am allowed to make those decisions at the at the cost of of um, web devs hating me, potentially. Um, I'll leave those words. Bottom left. Okay. Right here. Left margin, A attributes, left margin, parcel attribute. Maybe I should um, deprecate so, in the future because of this. So, you know, I need right. Right here, this one name right margin attributes right margin now parts length attribute are you cool? And top margin. I guess I should do that. Okay. Let's come. Attribute name. Top margin. If it's zero. So I don't know why I, I jumped down there to do that. It is. Top margin. 
our slank attribute real value. Okay. So now if I make clean and make oops. Sorry. I do this, uh, before. what is what? I guess I'll link it to you. Did I, did I make a mistake with the, the left margin? I did. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Look at that. Now all it's complaining about is type. Okay. So I will consider this, um, Correctly parse them, at least for now. Well, I guess let me go in and actually make sure. Let's go here, make sure it's finding all the attributes. I want to. I want to. I just want to make sure. It's like, name. Build it. Okay. And we're just going to walk through the tree here. Um, I guess I'll use Kate for this. Actually, no, I won't because this is a messy document. And Chrome doesn't seem to clean it up either. That's okay. That's fine. So, HTTP equiv. Okay, we got that from the content. Um, the domain, get another content, and then an href. And a rel. Is it out? Is that the end here? Yeah, then a rel, and then a type. Oh, things about. Sure. Top margin, left margin. Uh, PG color, name, shape, words, and then an href. Or href, quote href, width, two, two, so, no, cell space and some planning. Okay, this, I, I trust it. <laughs> We're going to assume uh, things are good, things are working. So, okay. So next up is the old net forward. By Nintendo. Uh, oh, actually, put this uh, nice debug going on there. Okay. Recognize attribute name type. Sounds good. No, oh, yeah, very, very simple page. I'm not surprised this works out. Fantastic. Castlevania Dungeon. Um, I okay. This is this is quite chunky. Is there anything to work on? Oh, oh. Hey, hey. What's the A? Is that a typo? That's got to be a typo. Comment it out. Nope, I should have done uh one. The batch was too much. Okay, nothing comes up. So that's a type though. And then it's just some more attributes. More types. Bottom margin. I swear I had support for I don't the type of margin. Oh, I put an underscore in there. That habit. Did I even look for anything else? Margin. Margin. I guess not. Okay. Seriously. Um, this is nothing to worry about. Although this um asterisk here. Did I need from tag string? 
I'm gonna remove that just while I'm fantastic data ddg input with two t's input type oh this is a long one this got cut off because this is four or five seven, yeah 14 characters uh, which is our, our hard coded number here so what is this guy No, actually, I'm, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, here we go. From object element. What is this? Uh, DDG. This DDG. Um, interesting. No attribute name unknown. Oh, that's a bug. So it finds an attribute. It doesn't know. Looks like it reads the value. Okay, well that's that's interesting. I don't think it breaks anything. And then the AA took care of that. And then these. But I'm doing uh do I do I lose backwards? This is um, without case sensitivity. So what's the issue here? Um, if I go on the test dot, I just changed that. Yeah. I know this doesn't make sense. It's just parsing tests. Okay. Last simple document that we should know. It leads about a third too. First, that should be contacted. Oh, I know why. It's because of this here. So, as uh, a micro optimization, so that an attribute at the very end doesn't have to do all of these string comparisons. We, we check the first character here. Um, but it doesn't check if it's capitalized or not. But in order to keep the speed of this, I think what I'm going to have to do is this isn't going to be fun. It's this. And that should make the problem go. If I do it to the B here too. Um, I mean, yeah, the problem goes away. Okay. You know, that's not really... I do. Um, this whole attribute parser, or I guess the, the HTML parser as well. It's, it's, you know, it's unfortunate. But I can't conceive a way to make this genuinely fast. You know, not fast for, for modern hardware. Uh, considering the, uh, the, the target here of... Um, embedded machines with networking on the PS2 specifically, which is single-threaded. 
I mean, this is the only thing I can really, um, fathom for, for fast lookups. That still makes sense, because I, I could go, okay, first character H. Well, is the second character E? Well, what if it's R? You know, that's a possibility. But then it becomes obfuscated to the point of supporting it would be wrong. So there's, there's a weird balance here that uh, I don't necessarily like to have. Hopefully there is a better way to do this. And this can be refactored. Would be great, but this is a proof of concept. Uh, and the fact that, you know, this is promising, and the fact that the parser didn't, uh, you know, hate itself, or hate me, decided not to work. The fact that that didn't happen was, was assuring that, uh, you know, it's it's a good prototype. Uh, it's definitely trying hard, and it's not disappointing. So I'll go, and I'll do T, and then do U, and then the W for wet. Okay. Okay, so there's that problem fix. G input. I have no clue what that is, but what I, what I am going to do is I had a, I had a map for okay, like the maximum attribute length. I think I'm going to increase that to 32 characters because I'm getting the notice that even though I don't want to support whatever um, that a DDG uh, input is, I definitely don't want it to fail to parse. Let's attribute length. Name length. We'll pump that up to 32. Um, and that shouldn't fix the issue of the content being registered, but it should at least, at least display it. Actually, it did fix it. Um, cool. <laughs> I lied. No element AA. Okay. Well, this was. Okay, sorry. Um, I disappeared for a few minutes. Uh, however, I, you know, this is very, very promising. Was what I think I was gonna say that uh, no major issues so far. But we're, we're about to get into um. Complicated web page, which is the the 2010 Nintendo page, uh, which it looks like Firefox didn't do a great job saving it, or maybe the the archive.org um, thing was a little broken. But either way, this is where um, things potentially break. You know, this makes me anxious. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. X and L and X. Okay, these are valid actions. What is X? And also, what what is this colon? Like some old namespace. What did you do with XML? Thanks to Apache. Interesting. I'm gonna leave that beep for now. Okay, so Super Mario. Um, I, I think I've noticed the issue. Twenty bit. Oh, 
Where's the last? But first off, I guess I should reintroduce. Um, this guy, just so I can keep track of where this is breaking. Okay. Find some types. Okay. So let's try to um, identify this. It's edge out ref and morale. It looks like this survived. Actually, maybe it didn't. It's the rails blank? Oh. I think it's because the rel is, is blank. I don't think I ever tested that. That's interesting. So, he... Um, let me do an intro. Uh, hello. So this should break also, man. Yeah, look at that. So that causes some breakage. Uh, so this might be a simple effect. So in the parser, get rid of that again. Uh, parse attribute. Actually, I'm in here already. We hit an end quote. Okay. So if I add a print here, you will probably notice this end. Uh, where it'll find a trial. Oops. And then, yeah, and then you would get the, the broken guy. Uh, did I really throw it at the top? You know me. So I'm noticing something happens once. And then it kind of corrects itself. Small data. I lost offset. Plus one. Also record. Do I still get the oops print? No, I don't. Okay, so I gotta find the, the right condition for this. I think it's interesting. Okay, got that up there. I'm not sure what the condition is for this. I don't remember why I put this here. I probably should have uh, explained that in the comments. Input. Do things break if I remove this, or is this like a just condition like this? Okay, well now that guy's like that. But if I get rid of this um, problematic line, or more specifically, just uh, the comment on him. Do any of these break? Castlevania doesn't break. The old net doesn't break. So I... Uh, does the content break? I'm, I'm trying to understand why I did this. Um, and the value break off.
Because if this is just here for that, I guess that makes things a little easier to uh, to kind of rework. All the values are um, are fine. Okay. So in that case, is this really just a matter of a uh, an end quote? We'll increment i by one. We'll break off. We'll say there's no value. So we'll do the same, pretty much the same thing we did. If I build. It still works. It still works. That still works. This is still broken. Well, are there less occasions? Let's go back to my top case. It's still broken. Okay. Yeah, this printer. Uh, broken. Uh, that was not intentional. But <laughs> we'll uh, we'll go with the uh, bulk nerf. So we get that print. It's a weird assumption that this is an end quote. Maybe it's not an end quote. Well, that part seems even more. What if I just break off? Okay, well that... Everything's more problematic. I definitely want to increment by one. It's beginning and everything else. But what interests me is it, it hits the deep It's a check for it, right? If it's white space. No, so it has an equal. So, and it breaks off. It gets that href, or it's href from the broken back, or it's href. Okay. So I mean, the the continuous is working. So can I get rid of this guy? Yeah, it's still, you know, both works. Yeah. Okay. I can work with that. So that means the issue is actually here. Content. Okay. Let me describe the data at this point. Looking for white space at the start identifier. Skip that too. Hmm. Okay. What about here? Okay. So this should be an end quote as well, right? Yeah, right now. Down problem. Now, 
Now. Is it is equipped with anything? An app? Um. Beat has val. A attribute name real value. There's something weird going on. This is like properly. This is helpful. So it looks like scrubbing and scrubbing. Oh, here's some attribute content. Um, all the way to here. And then it detects this as a new attribute. Um, so the issue does lie. Not here. By any means. Uh, but instead. But yes, here. I meant not here by any means. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this. But instead, it's here. Let's get that to. This seems to be an issue. So if I get rid of this, is the content going to start? Start quote. Oh, ooh, things do break. Okay, this is necessary. So, what if I do what that uh, offset minus one? Well, I'm trying to find the place where this is an issue. This might be it. Oh, well, this is always going to be the case. Oh, it's kind of silly. Yeah, of course. So, and HTML offset. Offset. So, this should be how we identify. I'm just going to throw some, a bunch of line breaks in here. Ingo, I guess, is what it's going to be. So, I should find one, only one. Yeah, okay. So, this is our problematic case. Um, has a value false offset increment by one, and then we might do a I think I break. I think I break. It's in a statement. Get rid of this brand. Let's make it a little bit Wow. I'm kind of dumb. So I don't want it to return. Do I? If I return, do I know out of here? I'm expecting a set file. That's, that's, I guess, the, the expectation. This work? Oh, this makes sense anyway. Because it has no value. Um, but it's one that expected one. So just ignore it. 
that that logic makes sense to me. Is there a better way I can explain that? Yeah, so this has no content. So it's not even worth wasting the time trying to look for content. This is the point here. Um, if I go and add a, it will go and it will add this to the matrix value a. Okay. So that being said, if I go and I trash that, yeah, I'll even make just to be safe. I'm gonna build. Okay, we're we're back in order, but in the page work. Okay, it's still a little broken. That's fine. We got past the Mario's. But it looks like there's a style that's broken. So let's find this broken style. Yes, this appears in quite a few places. I wonder if it's this one. Where there's a space. Nothing else. Wow, Nintendo, whoever made this website, it's giving me quite an interesting problem. Okay. So I'm going to comment this. I'm going to uh, basically rewrite it again to uh, get my thoughts right in order. Um, well, this is always true. Right, that's what we that's what we determined. So I should actually be working on loop here. So I should have some some if also. So right, if so wait a minute. Was minus one always true? I'm questioning myself here. So you know, it's just it's just atlas. Yeah, this is always true. So why is this? So this is always true. Which means that I should be able to just throw all of this. And things shouldn't break. But it doesn't break. Unless it's not always true. This is such an interesting problem. Is this does this skip is this actually not a fit? This should print everything but the broken um, intro. Okay, let's walk through. Okay, there's an ID, BG color, three more of those chords. All right, we'll skip it. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So. This is always true. Unless it's not always true, but I made an assumption. Either either way. No data. Offset minus one. Good events. Okay. If H T data offset. 
super veloz. Ahí los fax. Se pasa por el mano, por el cambio. Else if it's more data offset, so you put a space and uh, um, HTML data offset plus one is equal to an input. So you get response offset plus equal to two return. Um, I think that logic should work. Okay. Be rid of my print. Promise him. And we only need to check for one space because um, the first time we load a document, we we clean it up first. Uh, what I mean by that is we'll check, we'll get rid of all the lights, uh, white space at the beginning of the line, just because it's wasteful. And then anywhere there's more than one space, we've done it. Uh, even in content, which I noticed other browsers do too, which I wasn't expecting, but I was happy because that's less for me to implement. Um, is this the Nintendo 2010 page? Okay. Well, still broken. In the same way, I think. So this didn't, this didn't work. So let me, let me repeat this. Style, bam. This is what it hates. I thought. Great. So I was correct in identifying that as the issue. However, that wouldn't have thrown me. Right now that's just going to be stupid. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well let me let me add up some more parts here. Um print print R is attributing no data. Let's make sure I got this condition correct. Oh, well, the line break would help. And card for actually we stop C. Really? It should be right below. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong place. It doesn't hit this at all. Strange. Oh. Wait. Hmm. This is interesting.
Is it possible that the current card could be this spent? Or the, the previous card could be spent? Offset minus one. Even space. Is bad. And we want that style to be the only thing thrown at it. Style is bad. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So if data offset minus two is a start is a quote and it's not data offset also a quote. Now should I be the wrong print? Kind of really messy. Probational data data. Oops. Style is bad. Okay, great. So now I can play this. Doing this. Look at that. I really don't like the look of these like multiple um, line conditional statements like this. Um, but I, I like, for the sake of recording, to have everything be kind of slowed down. So it's I guess it's just what needs to happen here. So those are linked. I don't know why. It, okay, it does. So there's no need for else here because it returns. And do like that. Do like that. I think it's just the same thing. False. One return. Okay. More, more promise there. Back to Nintendo. Okay. Look at this. This is this is great. Uh, good progress on that one. Article date. Okay, that's actually an L. Uh, I think this is some like weird CSS thing. So that's fine. And then, so it looks like the style sheet um, attribute doesn't scrape off an end item, which is fine. <laughs> Parse style sheet attribute. Hmm. So I guess I'd have to be a little more. A little more in depth here. So, in size is thirty nine. The value, if value size minus one, as a space, 
bad. Let's do that. <laughs> Just so I know my logic's correct. So if I have um program like that, I should get one bad print and only one bad print. Bad. Fantastic. Size, I suppose. Fantastic. Okay. At the end of a style sheet at space space. Adjust the size to avoid copying it. Okay. So for zero is less than size minus plus. And I do want to move this guy in here. Minus two here, I guess. Or no, let's not do that. Let's just depend it. A dust pi equals value pi. Okay, I have to I have to put a null terminator in there. Yeah, just plus one. I'm going to say, dealing with C strings, you know, quote strings, character arrays, is, um, you know, it takes some time <laughs> um, to, to memorize absolutely everything. I've definitely learned um, quite a bit, or at least reaffirmed some knowledge working on this to such an extent. Uh, but it's, it's hard to, you know, be able to reference it in the plot. Um, so there's, there's that um, fixed. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Okay, I'll leave that there. But I'll also put a, put a blank one here. Just like that. Just some more parsing tests. Okay, it's time. Event date. Is this another weird attribute for event date? For element? Yeah, it is. Then we have this um, weird forward slash. Recognized attribute name. Oh, is that? I think it's because of that. Yeah, we don't have um, proper support for this yet, for um, the one-line attributes or elements, which is fine. I actually expected to see more of that, and I kind of assumed I ran into it. And it looks like, oh, is it because there's no, huh, why do we only have one of them? That's really strange. Like really strange. And there's no script. Do we support no script? Something something strikes me as odd about this. We don't support no script. Wait, no, this is um <laughs> um it's we do support the script. Okay. So that's odd, but not a huge problem at the moment, I feel. So that one's, that one's complete. Fixing a lot of stuff today, in only an hour's time. It's really cool to see. But next is this guy, um, which I'm hoping, I don't expect to have issues. It's very, very simple. So, throw this out. Oh, ah, uh. 
Okay. Arms. Um, no. Detail character delete on index. Oh, is it because of the overall document sound? Oh, I'll explain this in a, in a bit, I think. Yeah. Okay. Surely. I keep doing it. I need to stop doing it. <laughs> Okay, that's not why it's like. At least I, I'd assume so. Um, so I will I will throw to be added again after. Let me turn on debug. Okay, run. No. Access memory of the drips. It's 50. Who this is it? Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> it's still a bucket, but, um, no, surely, 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 surely. surely. Okay, something's wrong with this that I don't quite understand. I I want to say it's to do with the document page, just because of, of where it's cutting itself off. But um, I'm gonna have to come back to this because this might require some refactoring that I'm just not willing to do today. So, I think it's with the clean document. And actually, if I, um, document, if I get rid of clean document, things, things will break a little bit, but I, um, I think it'll, like, load. Yeah. So, the way that, that cleaning of the document works, that thing I talked about where we, we scrub, scrub the white space, um, as we, we run this function called utility uh, character delete at index. Whenever we find a character that we just want to strip away. And what that ends up doing is it makes this temp array, temp character array. Um, and then it copies, and then it skips the index, and it returns the new character array. Uh, but when you have a, a, a document that's... Um, you know, eight thousand or three thousand lines. Uh, it's kind of a problematic method. It's, so, what cleaning needs to be able to do is it needs to be able to do this in chunks, uh, which sounds annoying, and I just don't really want to do that right now. So. I will, I will mark this as an issue, uh, and I will take care of those, but not for now. But it's good to know that that was the issue, because when I get rid of uh, clean document, the call to clean document, it doesn't end up working. Um, and actually, it only complains about type, so technically the parser works fine, which is what we're doing today. So the last one, then, uh, is the Wololo document, which is, uh, might have the same issue. It's a lot of JavaScript, it's a thousand lines. Yeah, this might have the same issue. But we'll give it a try.
Okay, well, it did work, actually. Uh, can I have some good? Yeah, okay. Some of this might have been caused by said issue. Um, I'm actually noticing. Because when we don't scrub white space like that, things like this can tend to happen. Uh, it's a little, little anticlimactic here, though. That, that one issue is it's preventing some stuff. Um, display not as much. A lot of this, a lot of this input makes sense though. Data using name, um, a known attribute name. There's a little bit of breakage here. Right? Oh no, this is job. Okay, <laughs> um, something with the JavaScript. It's causing all kinds of issues in the end here. So it starts out already, or it starts out kind of broken, and then you get all this JavaScript. That breaks the parser. If I were, if I were to assume, it's probably a bunch of conditions. Noticing some equal signs that we're doing, of course. Yeah, so things uh, when it when it catches uh, some of the conditions here. Um, it'll it'll assume this is an L. It'll go through till it finds an end condition, uh, which I I think is all the breakage here. Most, if not all, because there there were some some style things here. But I you know to be honest, uh, I'm I'm satisfied with with the work that's been done. That we've we've got. One, two, three, four web pages working. Uh, two of them showed an issue with the way that uh, cleaning up the HTML document works. And we have a good test case for JavaScript, which I will work on, but not today. <laughs> um, I, I had a lot of fun working on this, but um, it takes a lot of endurance to sit for an hour and a half. And uh, you know, talk my way through everything, um, and also try to make myself not look like an idiot. But uh, definitely some great progress. Fixed a lot of bugs, more than I expected. Uh, to be honest, I, I think I went into this thinking, no, oh, well, I'll fix a couple of things, and then I'll run into something that, like, makes the parser completely useless, and then I'll, uh, and then I'll stop. <laughs> Which, to be fair, kind of happened during the end. So I don't want to um, rework that major core right now. It's kind of out of scope for what I wanted to do for the video. Um, and I also don't want to factor in JavaScript at the moment. But thanks for uh, sticking with me for an hour and a half. Probably a little bit condensed. Uh, it's just a lot of white space I'll probably end up cutting out. But uh, want to support this this uh, funny little funny little browser guy that's got very little to show for it at the moment. Um, a lot of code, uh, no rendering, and as I've probably showcased today, a lot of bugs and a lot of poorly implemented things. Um, you know, particularly uh, this huge guy here. Um, I have a Patreon. And patrons will probably get this video uh, a couple days early because I'm, I'm kind of looking for reasons to wear you as a patron to deem the cost worth it, the, the $5 or $6 cost. Uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know how to end this, so I'm just going to end it. So goodbye.